Shabba Mariaman and I'm doing a one-woman show. I started as a stand-up comedian for 10 years ago. It wasn't really dangerous in the beginning, so I was surprised when the first death threats started to come. I am enormously famous <laughs> in Norway. <laughs> well, I became famous because I was the first female Muslim comedian in Norway. And it's very hard to be a female Muslim comedian in Norway. <laughs> or any place else for that matter. Why? Well, because there's always a bunch of people who wants to kill you. <laughs>So I went to the nightclub where uh, I was performing, working as a stand-up comedian, and outside the same nightclub, I saw this poster that Mullah Krekar is going to be there to promote his new book. Mullah Krekar. This man is wanted by the CIA. It's claimed that he is a terrorist leader that he has his training with Al-Qaeda in Pakistan. It's, it's also claimed that he's personally responsible for the torture and death of several people. Also, the death of an Australian cameraman. So he was living in Norway as a refugee. And in his new book, he was promoting jihad and Sharia laws. And Norwegian human rights laws were protecting him. So this man was using his freedom of speech to denounce everyone else's freedom of speech. <laughs> In a nightclub. <laughs> you know, it was this feeling of fear in the room. And it made me think, it is our fear which is giving this man his power. And I went up on stage and I put my arms around Mullah Krekar and I lifted him up. <laughs> and he was smiling all the way up. And the audience, with all that fear, they start laughing. But somewhere up there, Mullah Krekar's face went crazy. And when I realized he's this is not what he actually enjoy. I put him gently down again. <laughs> and then Mullah Krekar said, it's an insult to be lifted by a woman. Well, the next day, the police called me saying I've been accused by the mullah of sexual harassment. <laughs> really? In a nightclub? <laughs> so I became this world famous mullah lifter. <laughs> and Norwegian weightlifting team actually honored me for my proper lifting technique. <laughs> I have been stopped on the streets by, you know, crying, uh, um, crying refugee from Kurdistan, from Iraq, uh, which are telling stories about Krekar and they are really, really afraid of this man and are telling me stories of how dangerous he is. It's quite interesting to hear him uh, in court as well because it's, it's like he's talking to two different audiences. One is his self-defense in the Norwegian court and the other thing is it's like he's having this um, other audience, you know, a kind of Sharia and Islamistic audience. So he, it, it's confusing the, the double play he's playing in, in, in the court. It could be dangerous as well because he had followers which also, you know, showed up in, in court and starting to film the witnesses. So they have to have to be in, throw out, uh, thrown out of the, of the courts. He is a challenge to, to the whole Norwegian justice system. He said himself that he wants to be sent to Somalia or Malaysia, you know, uh, the places where he can continue being a leader. And I think that's the, 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 the challenge. It's not just easy to send him out because uh, it won't stop his active activities.
if he can, you know, be put in a trial in, in Australia for that, I would have supported that. But I don't know why it, it didn't happen. I am afraid, yes. But, you know, what kind of life would I have if I let that fear affect um, my life? I, will be, I would have been a living dead if I can't work with humor, if I can't laugh. What kind of life is that? So it, it, it is a decision I have to make every day if I want to be scared to death or laugh to death. I will say I will <laughs> choose laughing.